If you're a DJ producer looking to seriously up your game in a small studio with some really smart modern monitors, the Adam Audio A4V could be one to look at. So in this review, we're gonna look at the monitors which we've been testing for a few weeks here in the Digital DJ Tips studio. And we're also gonna talk you through the smart features and some of the extra add-ons that you can get to take these speakers to another dimension. It's quite crazy what you can do with some external software and hardware to change the way these speakers sound for the better. So let's have a look. So this is the speaker itself. And before you immediately say, wow, they've gone for some weird design decisions there, this tweeter has been rotated by me because we have the speakers in a horizontal position in the studio. And that's one of the nice things about this speaker, that you can change the tweeter so that you can have them in the horizontal position with the dispersion, which is what the cone area does. The dispersion still kind of pushing the sound sideways rather than up and down, which it would do otherwise if you hadn't done that. So don't think that this is how they're supplied. They haven't gone crazy in their design department and decided that that's how speakers should be. Uh, it's just the way we have them set. Right, anyway, let's reset and talk about the speaker itself. So you can see it's quite small. Now it's reassuringly somber and heavy. It's a professional looking and feeling speaker for sure. Uh, it's quite square. Now they've, they've rounded off the front to give it a little bit of a, a curve, but the rest of it is is very square and uh, and sharp. Now the front of the speaker, you've got the kind of trademark. I know KRK's trademark is the yellow cones. Well, Adam Audio's trademark is for sure this ribbon tweeter. Uh, so you've got the trademark kind of ribbon tweeter there, which is a, a folded ribbon. Uh, and then this is a four inch mid-range woofer driver. So the four inch is where it gets the A4V name from. It's part of a family of speakers that have got all kinds of other speakers as well. This is actually the smallest one. Uh, it's bottom twin front ported. So that's what these two ports are here for letting the air move when your bass is, uh, is kicking away. So round the back, it's quite a deep monitor as you can see. Round the back, uh, there is a lot of stuff that you don't normally see on these types of monitors, which is what we're gonna be looking in more detail at. But starting from the bottom, standard IEC input. These are of course sold individually. They're individually amplified. So if you're used to cheaper speakers where you buy a pair and maybe one of them is the primary and one is the secondary, no, these are proper monitors. You buy them, uh, as I say, one at a time. So individual power supply, individual amplifiers. It's a class A, B amplifier for the tweeter and a class D amplifier for the uh, for the mid-range and bass, and that gives you a total of 105 watt RMS. That's the end of the technical talk. Right, here's our input then. Uh, here is our input for sound. So you've got a RCA and also a uh, XLR, RCA there and XLR there, and this button switches between the two to say which input it is that you want to be playing. Now, there is a gain control here. The middle is unity, and then you can turn the volume down by 12 decibels or up by 12 decibels, but that doesn't turn it all the way off. So this is just to tweak your position. Uh, and then here is a voicing button. Now the voicing button has got three settings. I'll talk you through them very quickly now and then we'll look at them in more detail in a second. So you've got pure, UNR and external. So pure is just straight flat frequency. It will just push out what you put in. UNR will make the speaker sound more like heritage Adam Audio speakers, uh, especially the AX series. And so if you liked the sound of the AX and you buy these and you want to get back to it, well, you can press that button once and it will just make some slight tweaks to the sound there. But at the top here, you get extra tweaks. You get four bands. You get bass, kind of low mids, high mids, and treble. Uh, and they've given them slightly different names to the ones I've just given them, but that's what they are. And then you can tap this button. So for the bass, you can boost it a little bit, but you can also roll it off uh, with a couple of choices there. Uh, you can roll off the low mids. Uh, you can boost or roll off the high mids, and then you can boost or roll off the treble. It's just a little bit, but you can tell the difference when you press these buttons. And this is to adjust the speaker for the the listening position that you've got them in. It's very important with speakers to get the listening position right, but obviously sometimes there's compromises and these controls here, all of these controls are designed for that. Now this is an ethernet socket. Why would you have an ethernet socket on a speaker? Well, in order to explain that, we need to set them up. So let's do that now. Let's get the speakers plugged in and then I'll talk you through uh, what the smart side of this speaker is all about, which involves networking them up to your computer. So here's a very wide angle shot of the studio and I've set this shot up because I want you to see how important positioning is with monitors. We have our DJ gear here. This is the table that I practice on and 
film our tu tutorials on, but also record these videos on. And we also have the speakers to my left and right, which is a bit that isn't normally visible in this kind of main shot that we normally use, but they're always there. And they are on stands. So these speaker stands are not only putting them uh, as high as kind of practically possible without them kind of getting unwieldy, but they're now a little bit tilted up as well. So these are pointing directly at me. Those two tweeters are pointing directly at my ears. And this is giving me the best short throw audio possible. It's kind of like a 60, 60, 60 degree angle and I'm equidistant between the two. The most important thing with any monitor setup is to get that right. So this is something to bear in mind when I'm showing you all the fine tuning in a second. If you haven't got this bit right, it's probably better spending your time trying to do that. And it's only when you've got everything else right that some of the smarts we're about to look at on these speakers kind of kick in and let you push it that extra step to, to getting closer to perfect. So, as I said, let's take a look around the back of this speaker here. Plug the power in. I'm going to plug in Ethernet to here, and I'm gonna plug in my audio here. And that's the setup on both of these speakers. So now that we've got the power plugged into this, I can show you how these buttons work. I'm gonna press the voicing button so it's on pure. And now I can set these to, I'm lowering the bass there and boosting the bass there. And if these are all lined up, then it's, it's uh, straight. And that's now cutting and putting back to normal the lower mids, upper mids, and highs. This is where you do your kind of like set and forget EQ adjustment. But if I was to put that onto external, this turns off. Now these are not doing anything. And the reason they, they're not doing anything is that this is doing something that I've set remotely. Let's go and have a look at that now on my laptop because we're now on ethernet. So I can look at this speaker. I can communicate with this speaker directly from my laptop. Put it back into its listening position and let's go over there. So here's the thing. If I'm around the back of the speaker, trying to kind of like change those settings in order to then come back to here, my listening position to see if they sound good, it's not ideal. So what Adam Audio has done is invent a little app which is called A-Control and this is A-Control. A control lets you network your speakers by using ethernet cables and plugging them into your network. And as long as your laptop is on the same network, A control will see the speakers. And I've got them here, they're renamed by me left and right so I can see what they are. And here I can adjust those settings I just showed you in real time. And so I can listen to what they sound like when I'm actually stood in the, the perfect listening position, which is right here with those two speakers there. And so this gives you the chance to really fine tune your listening position without having to keep jumping behind the speakers and back again. It's better than that though, because they've got an advanced tuning system as well, where you've got six bands and you can apply all kinds of shelving and filters and so on to these uh, and really fine tune your speaker to exactly how you want it. Uh, so there's a lot that you can play around with there. But it's even more involved than that because by using one of these, which is a measurement microphone, you can measure your room and also how your speakers sound in various places where you're likely to be stood, like here, 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 and so on, and feed it into a piece of software called Sonarworks. And Sonarworks is a company that Adam Audio has partnered with to help you to do this. You have to buy the microphone, but they give you like a couple of months free membership of Sonarworks as an application. And then you take that file that Sonarworks creates, that's got the, all the measurements of what your room sounds like. This is the one for our room, and you can see this is not a flat curve. Uh, this microphone and the rather convoluted process, it took a good half hour and a bit of trial and error to get to this point, uh, has shown us that we've got a far from flat frequency response in this room. So with this information, you can save that. And then the way that the Sonarworks software normally works is that say you're producing, you'll have it as a VST in your door, or you can have it as a system-wide thing on your laptop. So all laptop audio is fed through a compensatory algorithm that will take that info that I just showed you and compensate for the audio. And then when it gets to the speakers, the speakers are actually playing you something which is a lot flatter. 
But that is normal, that's how it normally works, this Sonarworks software. We've reviewed it already, you can check a review out on Digital DJ Tips. What's different about these speakers is that these speakers now can take that file that's been created by you with a measurement microphone and the Sonarworks platform, can take that profile via those ethernet cables and actually hold it within the speaker. In other words, the speaker has got a bit of circuitry in there, a bit of firmware that takes the profile for the particular room and the particular setup that you've got them on right here, right now. And everything you play through that speaker or that pair of speakers will be compensated. So I could have, I could have record decks set up here with, with a laptop nowhere near and play it through these speakers. And as long as they're in this room, set up how I've got them set up now, and I've calibrated them with this microphone and that software, they will sound better than if I just turned them on or even if I tried to tweak that EQ myself. So it's to give you confidence that what you're hearing is the closest to flat frequency possible in your particular room. And this is all possible because they've got a very powerful DSP built into them, right? That's one of the big smart factors of these is that all the controls I've been showing you, they rely on the fact they've got a digital signal processor built into them. So we did it. We got this microphone, it was kindly provided to us by Adam Audio alongside the speakers for review. And we did the whole thing, we ran through the whole process. It was convoluted, it took a little bit of time, it didn't work properly first time, we had to do it a few times. But in the end, we got the profile uploaded. And the beauty is that using the software I just showed you, you can actually stand in your listening position and flick between the customized profile and any other profile, either pure or one that you've tweaked to get it to sound as good as you think it can sound in your room. And it's subtle, but there was a lot more presence and just a lot more engagement in the audio that had been tuned, which I guess makes sense because, hey, it's been tuned. You literally hold the microphone right where your ears are and then you move away and then this becomes your ears while the system makes all kinds of weird noises and tunes them for you. So look, this is, this is difficult. This is something that costs money. Um, you don't actually need to keep the subscription to the Sonarworks platform because when your speakers has remembered how they're set, uh, you don't need that subscription as long as you don't move the speakers. But for DJs, nah, it's overkill. For producers, if you're a DJ producer and you want to make sure that what you're hearing in your studio is actually as close as possible to what everyone else is going to hear on great speakers, it's definitely worth considering. You won't be looking at the A4V speakers or the A series of speakers unless this is something that kind of interests you anyway because that's one of the things you're paying extra for here. It's the DSP and the smarts that are built in. Um, so none of this would matter if the speakers didn't sound good. That's the important thing. They do sound good. They sound wonderful. We've, uh, we've broken them in. They, they recommend eight hours of breaking them in. We've had them here for a couple of months. and We've used them as our only speakers in the studio. They're a lovely speaker. They are high quality. They are therefore a little bit more expensive than the entry level series. And as well as the high quality speaker and amplification, you're getting that smart stuff as well. Whether you need that is gonna be your decision you can get some great results from any studio monitors lower down in the Adam Audio chain and from other manufacturers as well. If you like the idea of using that microphone and fine tuning your speakers, but you don't wanna have an extra software and extra subscriptions and so on, you might wanna take a look at the IK Multimedia iLoud speakers that we've linked uh, down in the written review here, which have got a similar thing going on with them, but they don't need you to have extra software or a laptop or a subscription or anything. They actually come with a microphone and you just plug it in the back and wave it around. So they're a little bit more portable, but they're high quality as well. So if you wanted some speakers that you know you're gonna use in your studio uh, and maybe use somewhere else as well, and you're gonna to wanna to tune the room wherever you use them, you might wanna take a look at those. But these are the Adam Audio A4Vs, a high quality, great sounding monitor with a lot of stuff that is unique to this range. If you've enjoyed this review, please do let us know in the comments, ask any questions as well. But more importantly, if you want to learn to DJ with us, the world's leading DJ school, then come and join. We've got 27 DJ courses, but the first step is to get a copy of our book, read it, check out the way we teach and decide if we're for you. You can have this by joining us. The link is in the description or just go to digitaldjtips.com slash join. So until next time, get good, get out there, make the moments.